Well, I have a book here that tells some of the story of Christmas. What is it about? Your shirt's dirty. Let's change your shirt. Oh, that's because it's from chocolate. So we're back. You're looking really nice today. So next week is Christmas. Yeah. I'm so excited for Christmas next week. You talk about what's happening. It's about Mary and Joseph, and baby Jesus, and the angel. Mary saw an angel, and she was like, she got frightened. Gabriel's telling Mary that she's gonna have a baby, but she says um, that she isn't Mary yet. They're gonna have a baby, and the baby's gonna be called Jesus. He is going to do what the Lord says. And that's, and that's Joseph asleep. He dreamed of, a, of Mary having a baby. Mary is going to be pregnant. She's going to be what? Pregnant. Big belly. They're getting married, kind of. But why isn't he wearing, like, not a dress? Mary and Joseph took a donkey to Bethlehem. Do you think it would have been hard to ride that far when you're pregnant on a donkey? Yep. Tell me about that. What would have been like? Hurting and whining. And when they got there, there was no room. So why are they going into a barn? It's a... Uh, no. It's a stable. What's happening in the stable? The chicken is just that. <laughs> what are the animals doing? There's a cow and a donkey and a sheep. And a chicken. And they, when they were sleeping, they didn't know it when their baby was born. Their baby Jesus in the manger. Baby Jesus in the manger. See him, baby Jesus. Who was born? And wrapped up Jesus and laid him in a manger. So they go to a manger. They go to a what? A manger. I do not know why baby Jesus has to sleep in a manger. An angel came to the shepherds and while they were watching over their sheep, you think that the shepherds were excited? No. More angels and more and more and more angels appeared and sang glory to the God of Highest. The end. How many angels are on that other page? I don't know. You count them. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Good job. What would you do if you saw all those angels? Oh, man. What, what, what face do you think you would have made? Like not tell people. No, it's not tell them about what? That person. That's it. It's Jesus. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, all you good boys and girls. That was pretty cute, huh? <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas, everyone. So this is like the supper's getting ready, or have you eaten supper already? You're probably hungry at this point, right? Just like, ooh, I'm excited. Yeah, well, I, I won't keep you too long, uh, but, but yeah, you guys are done your Christmas shopping, maybe? Hopefully. Did anyone go out today? Any ding cars or anything like that? Bruised shoulder or something like that. Someone's like, yep, yeah. <laughs> ding my car. Um, yeah, g gift giving is a little bit hard, right? Because when, when, you, when, you, when you get gifts for people, I mean, the big thing you want to communicate is like you appreciate them, right? And every time you get them a gift, you're, you're saying something. You're, you're saying something with that gift. I love you. You know, this many dollars worth. And... Um, <laughs> 
But it's more than that, right? It's, it's per, you want that personal touch, and it's just hard to find that, that great gift because you want it to convey love. And, and today I want to talk about the, the gift of Jesus, the, the greatest gift that's ever been given to us. And today that's why we're celebrating here. Uh, we're, we're celebrating, uh, yeah, the celebration of Jesus' birth. And I really believe that God uh, was saying something to us when, when he gave us the gift of Jesus. So, yeah, before we get into that, let's pray. God, uh, yeah, we just thank you for, for this occasion and this celebration. God, you are so good to us. And, and God, I just pray that, um, yeah, you'd be with us these, these short moments and, and beyond this service as well, that as, as we go home as well and enjoy and just celebrate uh, Christmas, that, that you would be in amongst that all and we would just acknowledge that. So yeah, Holy Spirit, just as we're together as a family uh, today, would you just speak to us personally? Amen. So yeah, we, we might look at the, the Christmas event and it, it might seem a little bit unorganized, right? There was no room in the inn. It, it, was, it was pretty chaotic, Jesus being born in a manger. We, we, might, we might say that God needs to fire his events coordinator. Um, but I, I really don't think that's the case. I, I really believe that through the gift of Jesus, God was communicating, first of all, that I have a plan. I have a plan. And actually, we see Jesus mentioned right, right in Genesis. In Genesis 3.15, this is the first promise that God gives to man right after they had fallen um, into sin. And this is what God says to the, the devil. I will cause hostility between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He's talking about Jesus. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. So, so you see this, right? Right in Genesis that God has a plan. God has a plan for the redemption of man. And, and when you read the Old Testament, I encourage you, have your eyes open just to see Jesus in it. Like he pops up everywhere. It's all over the place through, through different stories that are found in the Old Testament, through, through prophecies that prophets are, are prophesying. He is everywhere. Um, it's it's kind of like when you, have, when you have a surprise and you just start giving little hints about that surprise, right? Um, whenever I want to surprise my wife, it doesn't work that well because she, she's one of those people that are just like, tell me, tell me, tell me. And I'm like, okay, here it is. And then the surprise is ruined. Um, but, but, but God, he, he was giving these, these hints of a coming Messiah, coming hope, um, that, that Jesus was coming, someone was coming who would take on the sins of the world. And you see from the very beginning, God has a plan. In fact, a, there are 108 prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus a, a, and his life. It's all over the place that he is a plan. And actually, there, there was a, a scientist who took just eight of these eight of these prophecies, and, and, and he, he tried to come up with a number, and I know it's hard, so he, he kind of came up with a conservative number. Uh, he came up with a number of, what if eight of these prophecies were fulfilled in one person? What would be the chances of that? And the conservative number he came up with was one in a hundred quadrillion. It's probably more than you have in your bank account. Um, that, that's one zero 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 zero. You see that Christmas was not a fluke. It, it wasn't a happenstance. God planned this, and, and this was foretold that this would happen because from the very beginning, God had a plan of redemption for my life. And I really believe, and I encourage you this Christmas season. You know, you look look at our world. Look at your life. Um, God has a plan for you. God, God didn't just make you to exist. He had a plan for your redemption through Christmas, and I believe he has a plan for your life. And, and you might look, we might look at the story of Christmas, and, 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 and it's a bit chaotic, and there's wild things happening, and you're like, whoa, God, like, is, is this your, your plan? You know, and, and at the time, people maybe didn't even realize the fullness of what was happening and what God was doing. And I think it's the same thing in our own life. Sometimes our lives are, are messy and there's bumps in the road and, and, and it feels like it's like, God, is, are you here? Do you have a plan? Are you doing something? And I really believe he is. I believe in each and every one of your life. You know, often it's when we look back and we see, well, okay, God, you do have a plan. You, you, you do have something greater for me out there. And I just really believe that, that through Christmas, God is saying he has a, a plan and a plan of redemption for your life. 
Uh, the second thing God is saying through the gift of Jesus is I'm here to rescue you and I'm here to give you life. Uh, I, I don't know if you've ever given a gift and you've heard the response, oh, that's not necessary. That's, that's, that's like the best response, right? It's like, oh, it wasn't? Okay, next time I'll get you something necessary, carrots and water, and that should be good, right? Uh, this, is, this is my parents. They're like, that's not necessary. And, and, or, or they say, oh, oh, you didn't have to do that, right? And it's like, oh, you should have told me before. I bought you the gift. I would have saved money. But, but the gift of Jesus, it was really necessary. Uh, we, 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 we can't look at, at Jesus coming in the flesh and, and just say, oh, thanks God, but it wasn't really necessary. You didn't have to do that. But, but he really did. And, and Christmas was this, this rescue mission because sin had separated us from God. It, it, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, um, and the wages of sin is death. And so we needed a savior. And, and, and Christmas was the beginning of God's rescue mission for us. It says in Luke 2 verse 11, Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the deliverer. And, and Jesus, you know, Christmas just marks the beginning uh, of this rescue mission that, that God has for our lives. Um, and it's kind of funny, if you look at the Christmas season, uh, you know, adjectives come up like peace and joy, and it's, it's not very peaceful, is it, parents? It's a little wild. You're just running to and fro. It's, it, it, it's, it's kind of chaotic, Right? And, and if you look at the first Christmas story too, we kind of even paint it as a peaceful event, right? You look at the nativity scenes and the donkeys like peering over at Jesus, right? It's all just perfect. There's no poop in the, in the stable at all. The hay is just right. And, and you know, we sing silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. And I bet Mary's like, you weren't there, okay? Try giving birth in the stable. It's messy. And even in Christmas, there was this battle, there was this war going on. Because while this was God's rescue mission for us, the, the enemy had plans as well. And, and, and you look at Herod and, and, and the babies that, that were being killed, Christmas really marked the, the, this, this war and, and, and this battle that was going on because the devil thought that, that and his plan was that through Christmas, or, or through death, he would stop Christmas. This was the devil's plan. I can stop Christmas. I can put an end to it through death. If I kill Jesus, and, and that was obviously executed or carried out through Herod. But God had a different plan. And God's plan was that through Christmas, he could stop death. And he could bring us in to this place of life. Woo! Amen? Yeah. And that's, I just want to encourage you, that's why we can really be happy this Christmas. That, that's really our, our eternal source of joy, our eternal source of peace. Our, that, 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 that's a deeper thing that transcends circumstances. And I think we need that in our life. Because sometimes circumstances, they don't line up, right? I've talked to, I even talked to someone yesterday, and, and he was just telling me, you know, Christmas is a really, really hard time. Because my family's, you know, it's, it's, the ducks aren't all in a row. And, and, and for some of you as well, Christmas is just a hard season because you, you turn on the Christmas special and it's just magic and snow falling down and hallmark moments and hot coca and all these things. And, and, and there's hardship, right? Life is filled with, with bumps and, and ups and downs. And, and I, I don't blame you for, for having this hard time because cause the world paints Christmas as, as, as it needs to be hallmark. But, but this is not why we have joy at Christmas time. It, it's really found in, in, in Jesus Christ, right? Our, our joy is not found in, in, in a, having a perfect setting uh, um, and, and hallmark moments with our family. This is the context we should celebrate Christmas in, right? But, but really, why we can have joy, why we can have peace, why we can have, you know, this eternal life is because of Jesus. And I just really encourage you, if... If Christmas is always a hard time for you, it, it probably might continue to be, right? And, and, and I'm not saying that, just think of Jesus and all this pain will go away. But I, I'm just thinking, take some time to remember, and this is what I told the, the person I was talking to yesterday, you know, we can still find joy in Christmas. Even if the circumstances aren't, aren't amazing, we can still find joy because it's found eternally in Jesus Christ coming to earth. 
And, and this is the life that he purchased for us. And so our source of hope, our source of joy, and our source of love comes from him this Christmas. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just going to actually quickly take some time before I get to my last point to pray for any of you going through a hard time this Christmas. Uh, can you just join me in prayer for these people? Uh, God, I, I, I just pray for anyone who's, who's going through a struggle this Christmas, God. God, anyone whose circumstances are like, this is really hard and it's supposed to be a great moment with family and it's just tough because there's, there's sickness or there's division or whatever there is. God, I just pray, you know who these people are, God. You are an almighty personal God. And God, I just pray that you would comfort these people you would speak to these people. God, I, I pray that all of us, too, would experience a, a deeper joy, a deeper love, and, and a deeper peace that's found in you coming to earth, God. And, and God, you would just meet these people in a very, very real and a very personal way. Yeah, just flood into their heart. And I, I just pray that they would just, just right now experience that joy and that love that you want to offer them in this time. Yeah, amen. Cool. You guys good for one more thing? And then to the turkey? Yeah. <laughs> the last thing that I believe God is saying to us through Christmas is, I love you. And I want to be near to you. Um, in Isaiah 6 verse 7, it says, For us a child is born, and to us a son is given. What a gift. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there, there will be no end. He will reign on King David's throne over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And, and if you look at Christmas, it was the zeal of God. It, 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 that word means passion and fervor and, and jealousy. We, we have a God who's jealous. It, not in the sense that he just, I want more and more and more and he's greedy. He's just a God who wants my heart. He longs for my heart. He longs for me to be with him. And, and this is why Jesus came. This is why Christmas happened. This is, this is why for us a child is born, a son is given. It's because the zeal of God carried all of this out because he wanted to be near to you. And for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And eternal life is just not just kind of like God wanted to bring you to heaven. It, it says in, in, in John, Jesus said eternal life is knowing God. So this is what God wanted. He, he loves you and he wants to be near to you. And because of Christmas, because of Christ's sacrifice, he opened up the possibility for that to happen. In Ephesians 2 verse 13, it's amazing. It says, for you were once far away from God, but now you've been brought near to him through the blood of Jesus. What a gift. What a gift, eh? Wow. And, and, and so this Christmas, we don't have to be like the wise men who, who traveled from afar and, and, and come to Jesus. If we've accepted that gift into our hearts, we can be near to him. And I don't know if you kind of know about this rule. When, when you get a gift, you have to make sure to use it, right? If someone gives you like a really uh, tacky ornament in your house and, and, and you, you don't really put it up, but then you remember they're coming over to your house. You're like, wait, get that ornament. We have to make sure to use it. So they see, right? Someone gets you a sweater and it's like, it's, it doesn't fit. It's really tight. You got to just make sure that once that you wear it in front of them, right? That's just what you do. Um, and, and I just want to encourage you this Christmas, just make sure to use the, this gift, to use this gift that, that Christ loves us and, and he gave us this gift that, that we are near to him, right? He brought us near through the blood of Jesus. And that nearness isn't based on your merit and your good deeds. This nearness is based on, on, on Jesus' blood. Th th this is where, because he died for us, we can experience him and, and we can be near to him through Jesus. And so I encourage you, um, Christmas is busy. It's, it's crazy. Every year, I can't even believe it's the 24th. Today I woke up and I'm like, is it even Christmas Eve? I don't even know. You know, it flies by. We go to and fro and, and we have gatherings and all these things. And they're, they're all fine and good. But, 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 but sometimes we just forget to, to, to just connect with him. 
to connect with Jesus. You know, and at that first Christmas, too, there was hustle and bustle in Bethlehem. There was a census. It was, everything was going on, and they were all missing the, the, the fact that the Savior of the world was right there in Bethlehem. And, and I think in the, in the same way, sometimes, you know, during Christmas, we're, we're so busy and celebrating around Jesus, right? We're, we're coming to church here again, a good thing. We're reading the Christmas story. We're giving gifts in the name of, of, of Jesus, who's the greatest gift of all. And we just forget to connect with Jesus. We actually just forget, ah, oh, he came, he did this so I could be near to him, so I can have a relationship with him. And as I was even preparing this and, and, and the Christmas chaos was happening, I just kind of slowed down for a moment and I was just like, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this gift. Thank you for, for that, that you, because, because you came, I can be near to you this Christmas. I don't have to travel from afar. You're right there. You're right there and you're close. And in my own personal life, whenever my passion uh, um, for God is waning, I, I, I start realizing that I, I'm, I'm, making it, I'm making Christianity about coming to events. I'm making Christianity about principles, and, and I'm kind of doing Christianity without really connecting with Him. And I, I just really encourage you this Christmas, stop and, and just celebrate the fact that He's brought you near to Him. This is what God wanted. God loves you, and God wanted this personal relationship with you. So I just encourage you, th this year, if you've accepted that gift of Jesus into your heart, just take some time to say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Look him in the eyes, connect with him. This is why Christmas, this, 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 is, this is what Christmas bought for us. That the, the fact that, that we can have a restored relationship with God. And if you haven't accepted that, that, that gift of Jesus in your life, I, I just really... I really just pray that the Holy Spirit would just illuminate the fact that God has a plan for you. You are, you are not a fluke at all. Uh, God wants to rescue you. God wants to give you eternal life. And he loves you so much. He wants to be near to you. Amen?